So our title today is Relating, Relating Kinetic Theory to Gas Behavior. Tomorrow I'm going to ask you whether you preferred if I wrote this thing out or if I had it typed. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So we're going to talk now about how do we relate kinetic molecular theory to the observed behaviors we see of gases. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to talk about pressure and volume which is, I believe, Boyle's Law. Uh, P1V1 equals P2T2. Um, so, start with pressure and volume. Pressure and volume. So what we know about these two things is that they are inversely proportional. As volume decreases, pressure increases. Or as volume increases, pressure decreases. So how do we explain that in terms of kinetic molecular theory? Well, let's think of a gas and let's think about decreasing the volume of its container. A decrease in volume means that gas particles collide with the walls of its container more often, right? Because they don't have as far to go. So if their volume gets decreased, they're not, have, they're not having to travel as far to hit the walls of the container. Thus, they're going to hit the walls of the container more often, and we observe this as increased pressure. So, more collisions with the surface, more pressure. So, that is going to, that means increasing pressure. Now, you guys, when I'm talking about two variables here, pressure and volume, that means that everything else is staying the same. I'm assuming that temperature, number of moles is staying the same. Okay, so whatever two I'm relating, all the other variables are staying constant. All right, so again, if you're decreasing the volume of the gas, or you can think of it vice versa, that means that the particles of that gas are going to collide with the walls of that container a lot more often. More collisions, more collisions means more pressure. Okay? Now, what about pressure and temperature? Let's talk about those two things. So, pressure. So what we know about these two quantities is that as one of these quantities increases, the other one increases too. So as we increase the temperature of a gas, its pressure increases. Or as we decrease the temperature of a gas, its pressure decreases. Or the other way around, if we decrease the pressure of a gas, its temperature is going to decrease. Okay, so why is that? How can we explain that? in terms of kinetic molecular theory. Okay, when gas temperature increases, 
increases. That's increasing the what? The average kinetic energy of the gas. When gas temperature increases, um, the average kinetic energy of the particles increase. Okay, so that means they're moving faster, right? They're moving faster. The gas particles are moving faster. So if they are moving faster, that means that the number of collisions that they have with the walls of their container is also going to be greater because they're moving faster. So they're going to collide more because they're moving around more quickly. Moving around more quickly. All right. So um, they are hitting gases. The gas particles, that means. Um, they are hitting, they are colliding with the walls of their container. with greater force as well, and with greater force. We observe this as higher pressure. And of course, the converse is true. Cool them, slow them down, they will collide with their container walls less often and with less force. And so we will see this as less pressure. All right. <clears throat> now let's talk about something that is a little more to grasp. Let's talk about volume and temperature. So when we're talking about volume and temperature, if we're talking about volume changing, then that means that we're not in a rigid container. That means that our container is flexible. The volume of our container can change, like a balloon. A balloon is not a rigid container. A the volume of a balloon can change. Now, when what we know, what we know from uh, our gas laws is that temperature and volume are directly proportional. Um, as temperature increases, the volume of the gas is going to increase. Now. Let's talk about why that is the case. Okay, when gas is heated, the average kinetic energy of the particles of the molecules increase. Thus, they hit the walls of the, their container. Okay, but well remember what I said, that we're only looking at these two variables, okay? We don't want a third changing variable, but this would make the pressure change. So, if we're in a flexible container,
container. What will actually happen is that that container is going to expand to allow the gas to take up more space so that the pressure on the outside of the gas and the pressure, the pressure on the outside of the container and the pressure on the inside of the container are equalized. So the only way to maintain a constant pressure given this scenario is for the volume to expand. And of course this can only happen in a flexible container. So if pressure stays constant, Volume must increase. And keep in mind Newton's third law here. For every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So if the volume of gas on the end, if the if the sample of gas on the inside uh, has the ability to respond to Newton's law, well, to respond to this this phenomenon that Newton's law describes, it, that for every action force there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction force. So the gas will respond by increasing the volume so that the inside-outside pressure force is going to be the same. But of course this can only happen if the gas is in a flexible container. All right. What's next? All right, you guys, let's look at pressure. And moles. Okay, so these are directly related to one another. As the number of moles of gas increases, the pressure of that gas is going to increase, or vice versa. As the number of moles of gas decrease, the pressure of that gas is going to decrease. And so an increase, an increase in moles of gas will increase the number of collisions with the container walls thus more pressure. vice versa. You remove gas, there's going to be less collisions because you've got less particles of gas colliding with the walls of the container. All right. Um, and last but not least, you guys, let's just talk a little bit about gas mixtures, and then we're done. Total pressure exerted uh, by a mixture of gases is the sum of the pressures of the individual gases. We know this as Dalton's law of partial pressure. 
pressure. And so just this last descriptive part that's important to keep in mind with gas, about gases. Gas particles are independent of each other. Gas particles are independent of each other. And the volumes, sorry, I'm going to run on here. And the volumes of the independent molecules are an important. space does the actual molecule itself take up are unimportant. The identities of gas particles don't matter. Thank you.